I'm Charlotte Cook with Juice Your Yoga. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be doing chair yoga today. So go ahead and get your chair. You can use a folding chair or a dining room chair, um, preferably with no arms on it. So we're going to start seated. Going to take just a moment to center. That'll give you a minute to get your chair and when you're coming to yoga go ahead and be ready and have a chair nearby because a lot of times we'll use a chair on some of the poses or even if we do, the entire class doesn't on some poses that may be a little difficult for you I will show you variations with a chair so it's a good idea to have the chair close by so let's take a moment and do some breathing just breathing in through the nose breathing normally and then as you exhale through the nose, make your exhale long and smooth. See if you can make that out breath longer than your in breath. Not trying to take an extra deep in breath, just a normal in breath. And a nice long fluid out breath. Just enough to take a moment to come into stillness and center yourself from whatever you've been doing today and letting everything else go and just bring your mind to your breath. And giving yourself an girl or an boy for taking time out from your busy schedule to do yoga for a few minutes. So inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale, rotate the palms down, bring the arms down. And for those of you that may not have been with us in the past, I just want to show you quickly the power of the breath. Uh, raising your arms up just halfway, about right there, don't come all the way up, and then dropping them down. Okay. Now this time we're going to bring the breath into it. Inhale, bringing them up. Exhale, bringing them down. And now this third time, we're going to be breathing, but we're going to do it intuitively. You will intuitively breathe correctly in yoga. It will come to you if you're not to begin with. But most of us, in all your yoga poses, you're inhaling coming up, you're exhaling coming down. So go ahead and do that a couple of times. Don't even think about the breath. Just let it happen. Let the breath just fill your arms up, and then the arms feeling the breath. So the breath and the body come together, which, of course, yoga means union of the mind, body, and spirit. So this is one of the ways that as the breath works with the body, you see how effortless that is for you? So that just kind of shows you how our breath leads, leads you through the poses. And now we're going to do a gentle twist. And the twist in the chair is just as beneficial as the twist uh, that we do while we're on the floor. And this whole class, we're going to use the chair. But for those of you that are more advanced in your practice, you, you will be surprised at the benefits you will get for, from the chair if you've never used it. Because we'll all have days where maybe we don't want to get in the floor, but we'd like to do our yoga practice. So this is good, good to know. So I have my back hand, my back arm on the back of my chair, and I'm going to reach my front arm, my right arm, around and hold on to the chair. It's doesn't have to be exactly where I am. It's going to be depending on the length of your uh, arms and torso. But we're going to use our hands to twist our waist around toward the back of the chair. And as I twist, my hips are going to move and your hips are probably going to be hanging off of the chair. So I'm walking my right arm around where I'm holding the back of the chair and the left arm is coming down. I'm holding on to the chair, but I'm softening this left shoulder down and looking around to the left. Inhale, lengthening your spine. Exhale, softening the shoulders. You're opening across the sternum. And then walking the hands back around, twisting the head back first where it's square on your shoulders turning back very intentionally and then twisting downward toward the waist. So then we'll go to the other side. I twisted my microphone right off my body, folks, so bear with me. 
toe turn to the right, feet flat on the floor, knees over your ankles, sit up tall and straight, rest your back hand, my right hand, back in the back of the chair, reach over with the front hand, get hold of the chair, and as you exhale, you're only twisting on your exhale, you're starting to twist at the base of the spine, down at the waist. Allow the hips to pivot as they need to, and you'll find that one side is going to be different than the other. But use your hands to pull yourself around, not forcing it. And finally, this hand will be reaching downward so that that shoulder, you don't want the shoulder crunching up towards your ear, softening down, looking over that right shoulder. Soften the left shoulder down. You're making space between the ears and the shoulders. Shoulder blades seated into the body, deepening your twist. If you find you've gone too far, just back out a little bit. Letting the breath lead you into the twist. Exhaling, twisting, inhaling, lengthening. Then bring the head back square on the shoulders. You're coming back on your exhale. Exhaling, walking the arms around, bringing the shoulders around first, and then untwisting the waist last. Come back to center to swivel yourself back around and take your right leg and extend it out. Press your heel away from the body. Bring the toes towards your body. You'll feel this right here in your hamstring and you can stay right there or if you want you can lift it up a little bit and then lift it, lower it back down, working that muscle. And bend the knee. Don't let your foot touch the ground yet and then bring it back down. So now inhale up, keeping the ankle flexed out, in and down, up, out, in and down. And these are things, and then extend your left leg, pressing that heel away, stretching the hamstring. These are things that you can do uh, while you're doing something else. Hopefully you'll be so involved in your yoga that you're not going to want to watch TV when you're doing this, but it's better to do it at some point. Sometimes we have to work it out the way we can. So up and down. Oh, we forgot to lift this one. Lift this one up a minute. Work that muscle. Then down and up and down and in and down. Up, out, in, down. See how I'm trying to tilt back in my chair? Try to resist that. Try to stay sitting up straight as the leg works. And down. You're going to take your right leg and cross it over the left leg. Um, and you notice when the leg comes up there, where are you feeling it? In your hip? Probably. So, your knee may be up here with the leg crossed. So the idea is to try to soften the knee out to the side. Do not press the knee. Just the gentle touch of your, the palm of your hand and the inside of this knee is enough to remind you as you exhale to soften that part of the leg down. If you push, you could hurt your leg. Take your opposite hand and pull your toes back towards you. And then pull them away from you. Sometimes as we age, our feet do not want to flatten down. They get stiff and sh the short, shorten um, the fascia and uh, the tendons in our body will shorten and constrict. So a lot of that has to do with the energy of our body and blockages that we can get in our body, causing our bodies not to work at the optimal place that they need to be. So that can cause illness, frustration, even depression. So take the, your right hand under this knee, get hold of the ankle or the foot here. Try not to put a lot of pressure on the ankle. So lift the leg up and lean back in your chair. Now if you can't do that, stay where you are. <laughs> okay, breathe. 
and try to keep the leg up and then sit up straight. So it's back in the chair. It's harder when I sit up straight and lift it up. And if you want a little more, you can reach over and bend the leg, take this hand over. We call this rocking the baby in yoga. So feel free to bring the leg up as high as you can comfortably get it. Woo! And down. Now the other leg. Bring the leg up. The pose is not that hard. It's just sometimes holding the leg up that close and talking at the same time. I had a lady tell me last week, lay this hand. And she said, I don't know how you do these and talk. I said, that's the hardest part of learning to teach yoga. <laughs> it's not the poses. It's the talking when you do them. So relaxing the hand there. Exhale, softening the knee down. Pulling the toes back. And then bringing them back towards you. And you could take this moment, you know, run your finger between the toes, give yourself a little foot rub, whatever you feel like doing. But as we come into a place of stillness in yoga and staying with our breath, we will begin to notice uh, how that breath and the movements of the body, how they will, and then we're going to bring the leg up. Trying to support the ankle. If you put the foot here, you, it's going to put pressure on the outside of your ankle. So, and lift it up. You can go ahead and lean back. But moving like we do is going to dissolve the blockages in the body. I'm going to get my hand under there a little better, so I'm pulling my leg up. So feel free to adjust your pose. You may not be doing it exactly like I did. And breathe. And walk the baby if you want to. Burp your baby if you want to. Be aware if you're going to get real vigorous with this and start rocking back and forth horizontally. Um, be careful doing that. You don't want to go real far. You will feel it in your hip and may injure yourself. Sit it back down. Uncross, scoot to the edge of your chair where your sit bones are on your chair. Bring the feet outward, toes facing out. So the toes are pointing outward, the knees are over your toes, and you're going to sit up tall. This is called saddle pose. And then we're going to exhale from their hinge. Our hinge is where our legs attach to our torso. So inhale, sitting up straight. Lead with your heart. Keep the neck and head right in line with your spine. And exhale forward. Inhale, lengthening the front of the body. The breath is coming from the lower groin all the way up through the crown of your head. Exhaling, softening down. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale, softening over. And then, if you can, if you have blocks, you can put your blocks there, or you can come down to your fingers. Breathing in to the inner thighs, that's where you're going to feel this pose. And coming up, walking the feet together, or stepping them together. And then one more before we include our chair yoga pose because you'll be able to use your imagination and work the standing poses that you've already learned and we, we will go over standing poses again in other classes but another way you can use the chair your half sun salutation inhaling up swan dive down so if you're not coming to the floor you can come to the seat of the chair you can use the legs or you can come down here and rest your head in the chair you can put your block in the chair to lift you up. You can build your bridge with your fist and rest your forehead. But here we would be, we would have exhaled, come over, and now we're going to inhale and come up. And then exhale into prayer. I'll do it again now. Inhaling. See how the breath is leading you through it. You're swan diving over on an out breath. You're going to come up halfway, making an L with your body. If you need to hold on, hold on. Exhaling, flowing back down to the chair. Inhaling, leading up. Exhaling, 
in the prayer pose. Okay. And then go ahead and sit back down in your chair. Bring your hands to your heart in prayer pose. Your yoga practice is from the inside out. You are opening from the inside outward. So bring the base of your hands together, your pinkies and your thumbs, and go ahead and touch the other three fingers. Breathing in, breathing out, just falling into your breath. Thinking of your hands, here is a flower. A lot of spring flowers around right now. An opening. Opening from the inside out, just like the flowers do. Namaste. Thank you. I'm Charlotte with your Juice Yoga. Shine on till next time. Thank you. This video has been brought to you by Juice 34. Juice is your community-owned provider for electric, internet, cable TV, and true local programming. There is power in community. There is power in knowing your neighbors and working with people who actually live here, not out-of-town strangers. There is power in being based here, in raising our children here. In fact, at Juice, we believe there's nothing more powerful than hometown service. Juice. Hometown service. World-class reliability.